God, help me to have a new experience with this today. And sometimes I just need to have a new experience. Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, uh, it's that pizza that you need and that you can enjoy. It's at 1811 Pico Boulevard on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block Pizza, get that hitter. I'd like to announce some upcoming tour dates. I will be in the Omaha, Nebraska at the Omaha Funny Bone, January 11th and 12th. I will be in Irvine, California, January 18th and 19th and January 20th uh, at the Irvine Improv. And I will be at the uh, Columbus Funny Bone, February 8th and 9th in Columbus, Ohio, and February 22nd and 23rd at the Houston Improv. All of those tickets are on sale now, uh, theovon.com slash tour. Thank you guys for being here with me today. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I did. I did a couple of different things. Uh, but I want to start this episode off with uh, some music. And this music is by a beautiful young man, uh, and his name is Evan Bartles. Mother, may I open my eyes Cause there's a great big world waiting right outside Mother, may I raise my voice Do we the people have that choice Mother, may I rest my head Though I did not try my best mm. Mother, may I sip the wine Though I did not take the vine Mm. Pretty powerful stuff there, right there. And that's Evan Bartles. And that song is The Devil, God, and Me. And man, I can, you know, when he's asking his mother for permission, you know, I could really, uh, I could relate with that. You know, I can, you know, it's, you know, as young men, we all need, we need permission from our mothers to, to be okay. You know, we need permission from our mothers uh, to feel okay. We need permission. You know, I needed permission. I don't say we, but I needed permission, you know, from my mother to, to experience the world comfortably and and that is pretty fascinating uh, to be reminded of that and actually to be not even reminded of that but to be reminded of that for the first time how much of a gateway to the world and how I experience the world um, and how a young man experiences the world that our mothers can be. And that's Evan Bartles, the devil, God, and me. Um, Thank you guys for being here. That one shook me up out of the gate. You know, it's funny how music has that power, huh? I wonder if one day they'll find out that inside of us, there are all, you know, that inside of us, there are like musical, you know, I wonder if our Maybe our rib cages have like notes or something built into them. Like, you know, 
A S D F G B A C or whatever. You know, each rib is a different. If you hit it with a little tong, you might get a different out of our rib cages. You know, like if we have music built into us that we don't even know, like it's in, and that's why we connect sometimes with music so much. I wonder, you know, I wonder what the future holds, what like levels of connectivity we will find if there's like a whole nother plateau of how we connect, um, you know, with music or with the world, if, if, or, you know, with, uh, with the atmosphere, with sunlight, with water. I wonder if we'll be able to find, you know, obviously they make us feel good and they make us think those things, but I wonder if they'll be able to scientifically, you know, really evaluate how, start to be able to quantify how we connect with those things and we'll really start to um, be able to, you know, almost play the music that is inside of us better because we'll be able to orchestrate it from outside of us. Like, I wonder if there could be a musical series of tones of notes that can cure cancer. What if they found that one day? What if you just listen to Jesse's girl 200 times and suddenly everything is benign? And I think benign is a good one. I'm not sure if benign is the good one or not. But that was Evan Bartles, the devil, God, and me. And if you want to feel something and you want to have music pull something out of you, uh, then that's a great song to do it. And we'll have that linked up at the top of our page uh, on the YouTube. Uh, thank you guys for being here with me today. It is late November, and it's a time of discovery. I always found this time of year to be a real time of discovery. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And I hope it reminded you of good things and bad things and just everything. I love this time of year. It makes me slow down and it makes me start to, you know, just have some gratitude. Today, I just really thought about gratitude. Um, I was reminded of it by some of the calls that came in uh, onto the hotline. And we'll get to some of those. And as always, the hotline number is 985-664-9503. Um, I had a good Thanksgiving. I went to Thanksgiving at Brendan Schaub's. And Brendan Schaub's is a man. He does a podcast. He is a, you know, he was a wrestler or fighter. Sorry. And he, professional fighter. And he... Um, does a podcast called The Fighter and the Kids. And it's basically like, I think like a foster agency sort of. And he, I don't know if his he adopted, you know, it's like his Make-A-Wish kid is actually more of a senior citizen. And the man's name is uh, Brian Callens. And they are teammates and they're buddies. And Brendan Schaub's had me over at his place for Thanksgiving. And it was awesome. And he has a beautiful little son and uh, a beautiful little family. And it was just nice to see. It's nice to, you know, it's nice to be able to experience somebody in a different element of their life because it gets to give you more of a fuller picture of them, of those, of that person. Like when you see the post office man, sometimes you see your mailman, you see him maybe smoking a joint over by the bowling lanes. And you're like, damn, Mr. Fucking, you know, Mr. Randall. He likes to, you know, get blown out of his mind. And it starts to, it gives you a better picture. So now when your mail's late, you're not just like, oh, fuck Mr. Randall. You're like, dang, fucking Mr. Randall probably somewhere getting blown out of his mind or copping a couple grams. And that's why, you know, I'm not getting my Amazon paper towel rolls that I ordered. So it just, you know, it's interesting when you see somebody in a different, like whenever you see the bus driver at the supermarket. When I was young, we had a bus driver and this lady named Dot Wall. And a lot of people aren't named Dot. I mean, Dot's an easy name. It's basically, it's Todd spelled backwards and then you take one of the D's off. D-O-T. And... And Dot Wall had nice lipstick, 
and the rest of her kind of looked, she always looked like a senior citizen. She had kind of a gray kind of tone, but beautiful lipstick. And she smiled, man. I, she smiled so big when I would see her in the morning on the school bus. She would get, I mean, the lipstick would get on her earlobes. That's how big she would smile. And she would open that door. And, you know, I saw her one time. I saw her at the supermarket. And, uh, and I saw the things that were in her cart, in her shopping cart. Because, look, I've, I've never been a mystic. You know, I've never been a, you know, a John Edwards crossing over or a, you know, a um, sorcerer or done anything where you can look at somebody and guess their life. But if you see somebody's shopping cart at the at the shopping mall or at the produce store, the supermarket, you can really predict somebody's life a little bit. If they got a couple, you know, two cans of sardines and a pumpkin pie. You know it might be a brother. You know, if they got four jars of olives and a bunch of toilet paper because they're going to be talking shit, you know it might be a Italian. So, you know, you can kind of predict people based on their shopping carts. Well, I remember seeing Dot Wall one time, the bus driver Dot Wall. And she was at the, um, she was at the, supermarket and in her cart she just had you know a clean x she had a small milk and right there i knew you know that she was uh you know she was alone she had a couple lunchables and a, um what else did she have she had a couple lunchables and and some toothpaste and I just knew I, from her card immediately, I knew that she lived by herself, you know. Um, and it just felt kind of sad, you know. It felt sad a little bit to, to see that. It felt kind of lonesome, you know. And in that moment, I realized why she smiled. While she was so excited on the bus every day was because that was a little bit of her family, you know. And it gave me a different perception when I saw Dot Wall open that bus up in the morning. And... uh and I would sit on that school bus. And most of my life when I was young was on the school bus because it was fun, you know. There was other children on there, and it was scary sometimes, but <clears throat> but they had the music playing, and I would get fully erect to the music. I would get just, damn. I mean, like my, like my wiener had a dang cocker spaniel in it, and it had heard something real far away. You know, my dick was out. I mean, my dick was really out and about on the front porch, if you know what I'm saying. But I loved this time of year. I loved going to school right after Thanksgiving because everybody, it was exciting. Christmas, what are you getting? What are you getting? A hatchet? What are you getting? Oh, my dad got us, you know, matching neck braces. We're going to do a class action suit. And you're like, heck yeah, congratulations. What are you getting? Somebody be like, I'm getting a, um, you know, I, I, I'm getting a, uh, a, 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 a flamethrower. And you be like, man, fuck you, man. You're lying. Somebody always lying. I'm getting a tank. You know, I'm getting a, um, you know, I'm getting a, uh, a pair of cement pants. And you be like, fuck you. But some people were telling the truth. And I, rem I just remember the excitement that Christmas was coming. I mean, if you put your ear up to the universe, you could hear Santa's sleigh so far away. And man, I just, I loved it. And I remember this was the time of year, actually, the first time in my life I ever got erection. And when I got, dude, you remember when you got erection, it was baffling. And I've talked about this before, but the first time I remember that I got erection, my, I thought it was, um, you know, I thought it was, you know, poops that were in my body trying to come out the wrong way. Because it made sense, you know, because it's the same shape kind of, it, you know, and, um, and I was just so scared. And I remember just squeezing, you know. 
doubling down with my hands on my wiener because I had that, you know, I had that two-hand wiener. And I remember doubling, just squeezing it back into my body. Be like, oh. And I was so scared. You know, I was just so alarmed and I didn't have that fa- that familiar relationship where I could talk to one of my family members about it. So I was constantly in my house just, you know, sque- w- squeezing what I thought was, you know, body, you know, number twos back into my body. And oh man, it was just, it was so scary because then I started thinking, well, maybe when I'm doing, you know, excrements that I'm not doing a full you know, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough body work to get everything out the back. And that's why, you know, I got natural poops kind of do out the front of my, you know, through my body, through my wiener. And it was just a lot. I mean, can you imagine the fear of that looking back on it and how much anxiety that would put in your body? And I just, I didn't. And then I thought I was like allergic to women because every time I'd see a couple ladies go by, a couple little duties would try to come out the front, you know, and I'm having a, you know, two hand myself back in the, it was just, so anyway, so this time of year has like, you know, it's exciting, but at the same time, it brings up a little bit of fear because I had some wild experiences as a child and that's okay, but it's, you know, it is what it is. And, and, and what I loved about this time of year was it just seemed like a, in the winter time, for some reason, I always felt like, or in in Louisiana, November, this it wasn't too cold, so it wasn't like frigid or you know freezing. So it was just it was crisp, and you felt alert, and you could hear the le- you know things were, you could hear the leaves, and maybe you know somebody would hit a car, hit a hit a power line, hit a um, power pole with their car, because people would be out drinking late. So you'd see a lot of power lines in the street bouncing around electricity, you know, and you would just get excited. There was loose electricity in the air, literally, and you would get excited and you'd feel the the wind on your face and a new year was looming, right? And at first there was Christmas coming, you know, baby, people was popping off for baby Jesus and there was gifts in the air and you could smell i mean you could smell all the way you know if the breeze was coming down from Pennsylvania you could smell them making hershey's up there all the way up there in hershey pa you could picture a couple little you know personas pequeños you know chiseling out a couple of you know beautiful chocolates that was going to come down the river and land in your stocking at the house and you could picture and then right after that you had new years and it was, New Year's was more for adults. I mean, kids, we didn't do anything unless there was like wrestling going on. But there, it, we were excited because there was going to be a new year. It was going to be at school instead of writing, you know, uh, you know, 2002 on your paper. You're going to write 2003. And that was exciting. And it was just, an, it was a novel time. And it was a big time. And it was, a, and that's this. That's this right now. And we can make it that if we want to. You know, it just seemed like a time of year where things seemed a little bit fresh. Where there was enough going on on the calendar and in people's hearts where you kind of, you started to forget about the things that had, you know, if anybody had wronged you or if you had wronged yourself over the year, I started to forget about all of that. But I went over to Brandon Shouse and they had a, and they had a nice time and they had, you know, Brandon Shalves is part Hispanic. He's, you know, maybe 40 or 70% Hispanic or Peruvian, I think, or something. I mean, look at him. The dude's, who knows? You know, he's got all kind of shit in him. And he had, they had turkey, you know, pavo. They had, um, uh, you know, corn, you know, corn salad. And they had also, uh, a, um, pies, a couple pies. Somebody broke a glass in the in the ice tray, so you had glass and ice. So if you wanted to get a drink and make it cold, you taking a risk right there. You might fucking two sips of Dr Pepper could fucking kill you if you get one of those really sharp cubes that ain't even ice, boy. That's not cold water. That's fucking glass, Papa. You know, this is violencia, baby. 
But we had a nice time, man. And it was nice of him to invite me and it just made me feel welcome. And and that's a, the, something that can happen this time of year. You can you can invite others in. It's not a why, like, you know, if May 3rd, you invite somebody over to your house for a snack, they're looking at you like you might be, a, um, you know, a BTK killer or a or a dangerous human or somebody that makes soap at their house or a real fucking creep. But this time of year, you invite people over. It's more normal. It's more natural. And so there's just something very welcoming about this time of year. And so, you know, I felt welcomed over to his place. And then I went to my neighbor's and had some food over there. And they have a newborn baby over there. And so that was, you know, just nice to see and smell a baby. Man, I don't know if you've ever smelled a baby's neck, but yeah. Dude, you could smell the Lord. Some of the Lord's polish is still on a baby. And you smell it, it smells like fresh, and it smells like, uh, like damn, somebody just all night just been rubbing downy dryer sheets on this baby's skin? No. No, that's insane. What's been happening is, that's the Lord. And you can feel a little bit of the Lord's polish right on a baby's skin. And baby, man, they, you know, and they not doing nothing. They, you know, touching titty with their lips and just being... You know, they that little that little jungle bunny. And they that's how, you know, that's how God wants them out there. I mean, there's a reason why God puts a baby out into the world and doesn't start us at 50 years old. Imagine you go over to your friend's house and they got a newborn and he's fucking 50. And he's sitting there and he's doing, you know, smoking Winston's or maybe he's having a couple, you know, sardines or, you know, them Vienna wieners. Man, fuck that. You're not gonna tell you're not gonna spend you're not gonna babysit that dude. You're not gonna smell his neck or tickle him. You fucking tickle him, dude. Who knows what'll happen? You might get HPV or something off his rib cage. You don't know. And so that's why God purposely makes babies new. Do you think that? What do you think about that? Do you think there's a reason why God starts babies at zero? Uh, that's the only thing I can imagine is that when they're so new, we don't have any judgments against them. Because I see a 50-year-old dude with a mustache, and it's kind of tinted a little bit yellow because he's been doing Winston's. Like my grandfather used to have, his whole face was yellow because he smoked about 30, 40 Winston's a day. And he polished off them super Winston's. They had It was like four Winston's in one. And he just... <laughs> And he used to blow cigarette smoke in my eyes and cheat at uh, Rummy. We used to play gin rummy. And that was our family fun. But, but his whole face and neck turned green and then they cut his toes off because he smoked, they had too much smoke logged in him. He had whatever, maybe diabetes or, you know, whatever happens. But, but happy Thanksgiving, man. And I hope that this is a time of year for you that's fresh and new. And I'm trying to take some of that into my life and make that for myself. Uh, we have a, we have a, a neat episode. Um, a couple of calls came in as always. The hotline is 985-664-9503. Uh, again, I will be coming up at these new cities, Omaha, Nebraska, Irvine, California, and, um, Columbus, Ohio, and Houston, Texas in January and February. Those tickets are on sale now as well. New Orleans, Louisiana, and that is December 26th, the day after Christmas at House of Blues. And those are almost sold out, I think. Um, and that's what's going on, man. Uh, this week, I am, uh, I'm going to be hitting the road. And uh, these people called in about it. So let's check in with a call right here. Here we go. What's up, Theo? It's Seth out here in Virginia Beach. Uh, this isn't a best weekend uh, request or uh, insertion. But, you know, happy Thanksgiving. You know, we out here talking about you because I'm coming to see you in D.C. with my sister here in the next week. And I got my mom here. We just listened to the Donnell Ron podcast. And all she has to say is, gang, gang. We got her. We got them hitters, bro. Gang, gang. Love you, bro. Love you, too, man. I'm glad you're bringing your mom out. And I'm glad you're bringing your sister out. Um, And that's nice. You know, there's some people that comes out and sometimes it's family. And you can see them laugh together, and there's something special in watching that for me. And uh, and and I want to thank everybody on Instagram. We did the relative rodeo last week, 
and relative rodeo, I didn't give enough rules with it. Relative rodeo is where you find somebody at your family or a friend of the family at a holiday gathering and you got to hug them. You hug them. You don't jump on their back. This isn't mating. This isn't, you know, touching each other's fucking little sweaty, you know, you know, sweaty glands and everything and being glandular. This is the opportunity for you to hug somebody and go beyond where people would usually separate. Because if you hug somebody, usually people separate a second and a half. But this, you ride through that uncomfort and you stay with that person. And at first, you, you notice a lot of people try to get out of it or whatever. But then eventually, they fall into the love. And that was relative rodeo. It was find somebody at your holiday gathering that doesn't expect it. And you drop that hug on them. And uh, you just try to hold on to them for as long as you can. And you don't have to get to eight seconds. The goal was eight seconds. Um, and people submitted a lot of videos. You can find those on Instagram. Hashtag relative rodeo. And a lot of people also misspelled rodeo. But, um, but I want to say uh, we had a call that came in about one of those. And here we go. Hey, CEO, this is Seth in Kentucky. Hey, man, I tried to uh, work that eight-second uh, hug rodeo um, with the uh, mother of my child. Um, we've been trying to co-parent, and then we try to get back together. Um, and then uh, she showed up at Thanksgiving with my family. Beautiful Thanksgiving. Everything's great and wonderful. She was uh, busting my balls, you know, flirting. She kind of pinched my nipple. Oh, beautiful. And pinching somebody's nipple, thats that means a lot sometimes. Because that means somebody's willing to touch, you know, a, an important part of your body. That's first base. It used to be. Now first base, I think, is really smelling somebody's name, you know? The, the times have changed. First base now is stealing a motherfucker's cell phone or something. But back in the day, first base used to be chest, you know, titty. Or they used to call it titty. I don't think they even call it that anymore. But so she checked your nipples, and that's nice. Sometimes, you know, in some cultures, that's everything. You know, in China or Japan, if you, you know, you, you know, do some body gas or you, you know, touch somebody's nipple or something, y'all are fucking, y'all might as well open up a small business, you know, or start an LLC together. But okay, so this is in Kentucky, and you wanted to try the relative rodeo, and you showed up, and uh, you guys have had some differences, but um, you guys uh, seem to be getting along at the Thanksgiving. Onward. Um, um, you know, just remind me that, you know, I still got a little bit of man boobs left. I used to be 310 and 187, but she pinched my nipple, uh, flirted with me, and I thought, you know, things feel good. This is, you know, we're good, we're in a good place. Um, I guess I need to tell the back story. She had an EPO put on me a while back. Um, I had to get clean. I got the drugs. and uh, We go back. She has it amended so we can be around each other. We can talk and work out with the kids. Okay, so you guys got family. She had a restraining order. You had to get clean and be able to be around the children. So you're bringing a lot to the table. This shit, y'all aren't, y'all aren't starting at the zero yard line here at Thanksgiving. Y'all are starting in damn overtime. Let's hear more. So I've been trying my hardest, man. Things have been going great. Good for you, brother. That's awesome to hear that you're trying hard, man. You sound good. Onward. All right, back to the story. I go Thanksgiving, having the meal. Um, but I try to put that hug on her, man. Um, and, uh, you know, she said the hug rape. Oh, hug rape. What is that? That's the worst saying I've ever heard, man. Hug rape? God, what is next, man? Uh, let's hear more, man. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I've never heard that term, and that really, I mean, that makes me upset, you know? That makes me feel like my insides just want to, you know, just all get together and fucking just eat a bunch of cement and not even do anything anymore. Onward. She, I mean, she was laughing at first, and at one point, man, she took the, she took the key and put it in her hand, you know, and was, you know, had that thing, you know, like a like a like a knife sticking out of her knuckle with the key. He's like, "Hey, this is all great. You can't do that." So, uh, you know, luckily my my brother-in-law cut off the video. 
Um, you say you didn't save it, but I wish I, I mean, I, I kind of wish I had it on video, but I don't know if she'd use it against me in court one day mm. or what. But this is a true story, man. This is real. It really happened. Um, and there you go, man. Some of the relative rodeos, you know, that seems like one that didn't go well. You know, especially if she put that little key between her fingers like that, you know, she she's making a little spicy hitter. That's that fucking prison popper. You know, that's, you know, you're talking to somebody in prison. You're talking about when you guys are going to get out. Maybe you're going to open up a coffee shop together or something. They look over in the distance. You hit them with that prison popper with that little car key between your fingers. And that is dangerous, brother. And so obviously, you know. Yeah, maybe don't try to hug her. And if you do, just do one or two seconds. You know, relative rodeo sometimes isn't for everybody. But I appreciate you, you know, giving it a shot. And uh, and congratulations on staying clean, dude, because a lot of rodeo riders are clean. I mean, you can't do a bunch of coke and get on the back of a big goat or anything. You know, unless you're thinking about doing something nasty. But you can't get on one and think about doing you know, achieving a goal or being a, you know, an actual rodeo person. So this is beautiful, man. I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you trying it out. Um, we had another couple calls that came in. Let's, let's, uh, let's hit one or two more. I'm trying to think of what else happened during my Thanksgiving. Um, what's been going on? You know, I started looking at some magazines for Christmas shopping the other day and damn, man, this shit just is exhausting. You know, I'm noticing that since I get at, since we get advertised to all year now, it's like constant advertising everywhere. That looking for Christmas stuff to me feels just exhausting. You know, how does that feel for you, I wonder? I mean, are you just like, fuck? It just used to seem like you bought something at a certain time. You know, when there was a time when if you, you know, we got shoes at the beginning of school. That's when we got everything. If you was a child, that's when you got everything. And you got toys at Christmas time. And you got one more toy or two more toy at your birthday. And then that was it. You got candy at Halloween. You got candy at Christmas. You got candy at Easter. You got candy at people's birthday parties. You asked for candy at the supermarket and your mom would beat that ass, boy. Or beat that neck, dude. Ooh. When I was a kid, look, no kid really likes to get that ass pop pop, do you know? But the worst part for me was getting my neck hit. <sighs> Dude, my neck, it feels like just, it's so sensitive. I have very sensitive neck. I mean, you can, I can't even barely wear a scarf because I can't be, really, really handle it. And your neck, my neck is like as sensitive as like 60 or 70 little bitty nut sacks all in one. I mean, it's, that thing is gentle, boy. If somebody even whistles, my neck fucking hurts a little. Like my shit is sensitive. And, and back in the day, man, if my mom, sometimes if she wanted to get you, she would hit you on that ass. And I got a big, I got a hearty ass, dude. I got the ass of a, you know, kind of like a black girl with Down syndrome. You know, I got that DS booty and, and man though, if she hit my neck, bro, dude, I remember, uh, Butterfinger came out one time with a real, was it a Butterfinger? No, it was Charleston Chew. They used to have a family called the, uh, they used to have a candy called Charleston Chews. And I don't know what it was. I don't know who Charleston was or anything, or or if it might have been the city it was named from. But and my mother sometimes would grab it. It was in a yellow wrapper. If you were bad in in the supermarket, and you wouldn't even see, she would grab one sometimes on the way in. And if we were bad, because we would be bad when we hit the flower aisle, we crack open a sack of flour, and you know by the time we hit aisle four, we look like a couple of fucking cokeheads. You know we've been drinking olive oil. You know, we're fucked up. Everybody got a pocket of stolen, you know, um, semi-sweet little chocolates, more uh, chocolate morsels. You know, we fucking up. And my mom, man, she break, when you weren't looking, she break out that Charleston chew and fucking hit you in the neck with that bitch. You're like, God damn. Dude, you could feel your whole life flash before your eyes. 
you get hit by that bitch, you'd be like, what the fuck, man? I end up working at the bank, you know? You get hit, you'd be like, what the fuck? I'm going to have two kids, man? One of them's going to jail? One of them's going to be Latino? Like, damn, I mean, you. my mother would beat the fucking future into you with that Charleston chew. Let's take another call. The hotline is always 985-664-9503. Um, I want to let you guys know next week I'm going to talk about, uh, I've talked, I've thought about, you know, bringing it up, but I'm going to talk about sobriety some next week. Uh, it's just so you guys know why I'm into that universe and how I ended up, uh, you know, wanting to be involved in that. Um, I'm hoping to anyway, if I feel compelled, you know. Uh, so, talking about some of that stuff is, you know, it's kind of personal sometimes, and I just want to be in the right like mind and heart frame to be able to talk about it. Oh, I hate to interrupt you guys, but I got to tell you that my skill set is lacking. I don't have a lot of skills. Well, Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 20,000 classes in business, design, and technology, and more. You can take classes in social media marketing, data science, mobile photography, creative writing, you name it, they've got it. You know, a lot of times I think to myself like, man, I would love to uh, be an accountant, but I don't want to go to four years of accounting school or, you know, bookkeeping. Well, you can go to Skillshare and whatever you're, oh, I want to be this, you can take a couple of classes on there to at least have the skill set to be able to do it. Then you can go practice it in the real world. I mean, I'm not saying that it's a, it's a get out of college free card or anything, but it's definitely a way to get a skill and get active right now. That some of the top 10 classes that this past weekend listeners have signed up for at Skillshare are Facebook ads for e-commerce, uh, presentation essentials, how to share ideas that inspire action, how to make Android apps, and music producer masterclass. So those are a few of them. Whether you're trying to deepen your professional skill set or just start a side hustle, go to Skillshare.com. That's right, and Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months of unlimited access for over 20,000 classes, just 99 cents. Go to Skillshare.com slash Theo. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo to start your two months for 99 cents right now. That's Skillshare.com slash Theo. Uh, let's take a call. Onward. Hey, Theo. This is Pagan from a little town in South Louisiana. A dedicated listener to this past weekend. Pagan? Uh, thank you for calling Pagan. That's a wild name, brother. Um, if that is, I could have I misheard you, and if I did, I'm sorry. But Pagan is, uh, that's the dark arts, man. We may be talking to, um, you know, Lucifer's little cousin right here. Onward, brother. Last night I did something stupid, ruined my whole weekend. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Um, let's hear about it, though. I mean, hell, you know, I'm I'm empathetic or sympathetic, but at the same time, I really want to know what happened. Let's go. Uh, did a good bit of day drinking, and then kind of disappointed my girlfriend with that, and left her apartment, and kept drinking, and. Uh, Late night, I go get Domino's, you know, had that, that drunk craving, you know, them beer munchies. and. Uh, well, I've heard of weed munchies. I never heard of beer munchies. But, I mean, I guess that drunk craving, man, you know, I used to, you know what I used to do when I would get a little bit of cocaine? You know, in the first time I ever got cocaine, I was in college. And somebody said the guy that sold it to me, I think, was um, a, um idiot. And he said it was performance-enhancing drug. So I'm doing, you know, a half a gram or whatever, and then I fucking go for a run. So I'm there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I ran about nine and a half miles. You know, I was about to fucking play for Jerry DiNardo. I'm out there, you know. I'm out there pushing sleds with T. Bob A. Bear. You know, I'm getting it done. And and so I had a total wrong idea of drugs. And uh, but when I would get, you know, I, I when I would get um to like a gas station when I was running, I realized when I was at a gas station, I had a thirst for 
uh, soup for Campbell's canned soup. And I'd never had that before. You know, I've always been a natural, you know, a natural sipper. Somebody who sips, you know, I sip regular things that people should be sipping. Like if you're at a, uh, you know, a park, I would drink, you know, water. Or if you're at home, I have a, uh, you know, a, a Kool-Aid or a little, um, you know, a, a juice or something. So usually if I'm at a gas station, a service station, I get uh, Gatorade or Powerade. But on when I realized when I was doing cocaine, if I hit a fucking gas station, dude, I wanted uh, broth. I wanted that broth. So I'm running all around LSU, uh, Louisiana State University campus. I'm in college. I'm running high as hell, and I'm fucking just polishing off cans of, uh, you know, Campbell's chicken noodle. Like it's fucking Gatorade, bro. And I was powered up. I was hardy as hell, bro. Performance enhancing. That's cocaine, baby. And so, uh, I don't know what I was talking about. Day drinking. Let's hear what you said again. Uh, sorry. All right. Onward. Dominoes. You know, had that, that drunk craving, you know, them beer munchies. And, uh... Oh, I was saying, yeah, sometimes you can get, you know, a desire for something else whenever you're on a certain drug. You know, like if you're on... Uh, like, I don't do cocaine anymore. And I also probably won't, you know, take a nibble off of a strange gal's b-hole anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because those things go hand in hand. I mean, one of them is a gateway drug to the other. You know, you, you so anyway, this is getting a little bit wild. Let's go onward. Uh, on my way home, there's two cattle in the middle of a dark highway and uh, I smoked this cow and messed my car up real bad. And well, there was a van that hit one as well. So those two cars that you know hit these cows, and when the cops come, they can smell I've been drinking, and they you know feel sobriety and lock me up and do a breathalyzer on me at the station, and I get charged with a DWI. And, Girlfriend disappointed, man. She left me, and family disappointed. Just really want some inspirational words about sobriety and how you guys do your life. And so maybe that can relate to people out there other than myself. So love you, Theo. Just I appreciate it, man. I didn't mean to cut you off, but you know, I I appreciate it. You know, we got your message there, and you know, I'm sorry to hear it. But if you killing animals, dude. Because you out there drinking, you know, what happens next? You have a six pack and you fucking, you know, you hatch it up a couple of damn aardvarks or something. You know, what happens next? You have a, you know, a fifth of lean or something or a couple cup, cups of uh, lean or whatever. And you, you know, you throwing death stars at a damn, you know, pack of flamingos or something in the park. What's next, you know? When does it stop? Because I heard you say, you know, your family's disappointed and your girlfriend's disappointed. But it also sounds, man, and this might be judgment for me, but it sounds like you, you know, like you're disappointed some in your in your actions. Because if you kill an animals, I mean, what's there's not only thing to kill after that is people, bro. You know, you're lucky you could have hit a couple of humans, you know, some fat humans or something. So that's pretty much maybe a blessing, a hidden blessing that you hit cows. Because cows, let's be honest, bro. They don't give a fuck if they die. Look at a cow in the eyes, dude. First of all, it's got eyes on different sides. It's not even, a cow isn't even using all of its abilities, man. A cow ain't doing nothing. A cow's an old-fashioned refrigerator, bro. They're standing out there. They got milk. They got, you know. If you hold that udder out to the side of them and let the sun hit it, you can make you could spray cheese out of that pack. But they got milk and meat in them. A cow is the original frigid air. That's the truth right there. But I'm sorry to hear that, man. And what suggestions do I have or words? You know, nobody can tell you if you're an alcoholic. Nobody can tell you if you have problems with drugs or alcohol, except for you. 
you know, I was doing, you know, I was running eight or nine miles, keyed up on a gram of cocaine with no shirt on, wearing a pair of orange umbros, jumping in the back of people's, you know, jumping over fences and shit into people's yards and and drinking canned soup for, you know, for hydration. And I didn't think I had an issue. Everybody's idea of if they have an issue is different. But I do know this, that you sound like somebody that wants to feel better than you do. And even if you maybe want to, you know, check out a couple AA meetings or check out that kind of environment, if you got a DWI, they may offer that as an option to you uh, through the court system. So you can do that sometimes and still be able to keep your license. Um, So that might be a good option, you know, to to take that experience Uh, because it has proven to be an effective option for other people. And no matter what, I think it'll be inspirational to you. You may have an you may have a problem. You may not. You may just need some inspiration. You may need uh, some perspective, uh, and I think you can get those things there uh, at some of those meetings. So maybe see what the judge has to offer. But you know the fact that you even called in and you're making things like this important in your life, um, that's good. You're thinking about this. You want to do better, and a lot of people don't. And so I commend you for that, bud. And keep your head up out there, man. And damn, bro. Because what's next, dude? You know? You fucking throwing, you know, you hiding a firecracker in a fucking falcon's throat? What's next? So be safe. Uh, we had a couple of calls that came in about Nut Vember, and we're coming up on the end of Nut Vember, No Nut November, where people don't do masturbation. And so let's hit a couple of those really quick. Onward. Hey, what's up, Theo? Gang, gang. Gang, gang, Papa. And thank you for calling. I appreciate you. Yo, this is Josh. I'm calling from Florida. I got a little nut vim question for you, okay? You know, I've been doing good. You know, I've been trying to resist the dark arts, you know? You know what I'm saying? But, uh... I don't know if I believe that. But let's hear more. We had about three weeks now, you know? Oh, wow. Three weeks, man. That's beautiful. Congratulations. You probably stacking. You probably feeling your gack a little bit in your throat. You might clear you might clear your throat and have things be a little bit thicker that's coming up in your mouth. More? No porn. Wow. No masturbation. Wow. Good job. Onward. But I, I I met this girl. You know, things been they've been going well, you know, they're gonna get a little hot and heavy, you know? That's nature, man. That ain't you. A lot of times we you know, I get by a girl and I got her fired up. That ain't fucking me, bro. That's nature. Nature's been making things fuck forever. So let's don't, you know, you see a guy, he's like, I make all the ladies hot. Like, dude, you don't do shit, bro. Mother Nature's out there doing that shit. You just riding her vine. Let's go. But uh, haven't got to that point where I got to, you know, finish the deed. Oh, you got to bust out, you mean? More? But uh, I got this condition, you know, it's in my, one. I got these kind of like, in large veins in my nutsack. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's called a varicose cell. Oh, yeah. My friend, or not really my friend, but this kid I knew, and his mom had varicose veins in her neck and shit, and they busted out one winter because it got real cold, and they busted. And because you're supposed to, like, massage them or something at night if it's going to be cold, and she fucking, you know, you know, R.I.P., you know, Omer. And... It just it makes the blue balls amplified. <laughs> oh yeah, well I knew another dude. He had an aorta went straight from his heart to his nuts. So his nutsack was really like a little heart. It was like a little, you know, a little sidecar for his um heart. So he really got that, you know, that that fifth aorta was really his nuts, or you know, he had a they had a uh, ventricle or something. What is it called? A uh, like a main vein, it's called a, like the super highway of veins when went straight from the neck to the nuts. And they had that. And he had that. And so basically, the way his body, usually your body has like six aortas or whatever in your heart. And it holds some and uses some. And aortas are little, it's almost like, uh, it's little places where your heart keeps blood. Because your heart can't hold all the blood in one space. That's fucking, you know, your heart would be dumb if it did that. 
So your heart has little spaces so it can manage the blood better. And he, he had a vein went straight from his heart to his uh, scrotum. And that thing would, ha- you know, it would harbor, you know. So anyway, uh, anyway, let's go. Sorry. So I'm just, you know, I'm walking around. It feels like my balls weigh like 10 pounds. <sighs> no, no. No, man, because you're, um, you don't have that much blood in your heart. And like, like I'm being tortured, man. Like it's painful. I got to lay down on the floor. So eventually I just said, you know what, man, fuck it. I'm just going to do a deed myself. But, you know, no, no dark arts, no temptation, you know, no porn. I just wonder what your thoughts, you know, is it, is it cool to go that route? You know what I'm saying? Well, look, I think you can do this. You know, they used to have this thing. It was called looking for the lightning. And it was like um, when we were probably like 15 or whatever, everybody would try to not touch themselves and have wet dreams and see who, you know, who could get them the soonest. And um, and I used to get them all the time. And I had some crazy ones, bro. And a lot of my dreams were in, you know, I was in, you know, different countries and stuff. Central America, Honduras, you know, I was in um Guatemala you know a lot of my dreams had beautiful backdrops and so it was easier for me to come you know to do spray and a lot of people I think have more localized dreams you know it's not as easy to bust down if you just fucking and if if in your dream you're at your you know your uncle's you know uh you know uh you know uh vacuum shop or whatever it's not as exciting. Where I'm in fucking Barbados while I'm resting, you know, you over here milling around around a cafeteria or something, subconsciously. So I'll say this, man. I think if you want to ride, you know, if you want to look for the lightning, man, then go do it. And that's just, you know, holding the line until nature does its thing. But I don't, you know, if you've already done three weeks, I would ride it out. If you get there with a young lady, I think that that's different. You know, I think, you know, I didn't really even know all the rules of No Nut November. I just thought you couldn't masturbate and you couldn't, you know, do self-spray and stuff like that. So, but look, man, I appreciate I applaud you even trying it. And I think that this program is going to evolve over time. And, um, I mean, next year you might have 60 or 70 people, you know, buddies, you know, all getting together in the morning and not jerking off and just looking at each other and, you know, wishing for the best. Because, I mean, these liberals, you know, these uh, these overt liberals, um, they're going to start outlawing uh, probably ejaculation soon. You know that. that. that Could that be on the docket? I mean, what's next? You know, and some men should only be allowed, look, I've had enough busts. I'm that, you know, I'd be happy to say, hey, no more over here. All right, let's take one more call about the No Nut November. Hey, here uh, on name's Andy from uh, New Jersey. Andy from Jersey, thank you for calling. And New Jersey is, uh, you know, they have a lot of air pollution up there. Let's hear more. And uh, just want to check in your progress on uh, No Nut November. Uh, man, we're all in the same boat, and uh, it's hard, you know. And uh, just want to check in and what kind of advice you had to, you know, people like the men like us, young men that are trying to keep that energy and keep that good thing in us and uh, keep on it in this, in this month and hopefully for as long as we can. So shout out. Yeah. Gang, gang, man. Gang, gang, Papa. And, you know, I appreciate you asking me and inquiring, man, because I didn't do too well. You know, I busted out this month probably you know, five times. And that's pretty sad, I think. Uh, So I kind of failed. I mean, I failed myself last night. And I had a stack going inside of me. I mean, man, I could feel even, you know, my skin felt more moisture. Because, you know, we don't realize what that chi does to us. You know, when you're chi'd up, boy, your elbows are sharper. You see a dude that hasn't busted in like a month, bruh? I mean, he could fucking, you know, he could lick open the side of a chicken. You know, he has those, he has real abilities, old school abilities. And yeah, man, I, uh, and I, you know, I've struggled with it. I've struggled, you know, I've been dealing with a lot on the, on my own side about, 
you know, really trying to reframe how, um, how I look at commitment and relationships and that sort of thing. And, uh, and I've been having like some visceral reactions to that where I, I want to act out or I want to do something, you know, you know, kind of randy. And so I've been doing masturbation some. And so, you know, I feel bad. I wasn't, I didn't try to, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't like give up on myself or anything, but I, you know, I just didn't do that great a few times. But thanks for checking in about it, man. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, we got a call here that came in last week uh, or two weeks ago. We had a ki- uh, a young fellow that called in and said he was going through a breakup. Okay, and here's a response that you guys have for that uh, this young this young fella right there. Hey, Theo, this is EO. Just calling. Uh... Oh, EO, huh? I think that's half my name. That's pretty cool. You know. That's like if, you know, my name was Darius, you'd be like, hey, this is Rios. I'm like, oh, Omer? About uh, that young man that called in, uh, worried about his breaking up with his girlfriend or is worried about his girlfriend was going to break up with him. And I just wanted to say, you know, like, I think everybody goes through that. That, that really touched me. And uh, I just wanted to tell him, you know, like, Hey, you're a young man, and everybody tells you that, you know, uh, things get easier throughout your life and stuff like that. And you get a lot of more, a lot more perspective. But nothing ever gets easier. And, you know, with heartbreak and relationships and stuff like that, it sucks. But, you know, I, it, it took me 20 years and I had a fucking breakup and, you know, with my high school sweetheart and we went through a lot of things. But, you know, I'm, I'm married now and I found the love of my life and it, and I wouldn't have found her if I hadn't went through everything that I had went through. Mm. So, I know it's hard, dude. Just keep your head up, man, and, uh, you know, whatever. So that guy didn't have a ton of information, but his main message was, wasn't bad. That in the end, it all works out. So it's hard to see where you are in this moment, right? And it's, 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 it's interesting because, you know, older people always tell younger people, you know, it's going to work out. And that's true. It's going to. But when you're young, you can't see that. You can't really see that, you know? And, um... And just hold on, man. Feel the things you're going to feel. That's what I would say. Don't cloud them with other stuff. Don't cloud them up with drugs and alcohol. And don't cloud them up with, you know, running out and diving into some other local stank, you know? Be natural. Don't all of a sudden, you know, start doing men or doing, you know, you know, selling your body or something. Don't do anything crazy or selling used cars. Don't do anything real crazy. Be natural for a little bit. Let yourself feel some of the pain and also let yourself like, you know, recognize, you know, maybe what you could have done different in the relationship and not in a bad way, but in a way that you'll do it better next time. Because if this girl is the love of your life, then I believe that, you know, God or whatever, a higher power will give you an opportunity to to have at it again, you know, for you guys to experience one another again. And man, you can be a better person then, but you'll be okay in the meantime, man. And it is going to hurt some, but, uh, you know, just know that there's a lot, any man you talk to probably has experienced that same hurt. So, you know, just don't feel alone, brother bear. You got this. Um, let's take another call that came in here, man. Uh, 985-664-9503 is the hotline. As always, you can call us and uh, hit us up here. Onward. Hey, what's happening, Theo Vaughn? This is Joel Garcia out of Yucaipa, California. Hey, Joel Garcia out of Yucaipa. Uh, thank you for calling, sir. Let's hear it. And i uh, just been listening to your recent podcast that you just put out and you know i was excited it's monday morning starting off my week right and gang gang you know you made me laugh for the first 20 30 minutes or so then you started just getting deep into your feelings and talking about your mom and he'd break to you bro but i ain't trying to hear that shit monday morning you know <laughs> trying to 
and lighten my day with your moods and and make me laugh and smile and you know just go through that whole deal so uh you know everyone's got to talk about their mom and their feelings and throughout their day and things like that but come on <laughs> trying to laugh brother so uh you know i hate to be the bear of bad news but you know feel better man thank you man i appreciate you calling and saying that um yeah, I feel you, man. And sometimes, look, I, you know, I don't know when I start these episodes how I'm going to be or what's going to go on. And I know sometimes, you know, I get a little too caught up in, you know, just in myself and my own feelings. Like basically just stuck, you know, stuck kind of worrying about stuff inside of myself. And I don't want to, you know, Debbie down you guys' days either or anything like that. Um, You know, I wish that I'd gotten through a lot of some of these, you know, normal ways of feeling and learning when I was younger, you know, some of the issue for me is, is that I'm kind of a late bloomer in a lot of ways. You know, I just started really having feelings like real, you know, or being like self-aware about two, a little over two years ago. And so, you know, I kind of have this whole new kind of world going on and it's still tough for me to learn to separate, you know, what is like things that are just for me and what are things like that I can talk about like in a public space, you know? And I didn't know when I started this podcast how this was going to, you know, I didn't know that there were times I would be talking about, you know, stuff, you know, that other people didn't talk about or, you know, I didn't listen to any podcast before I did this. So, you know, I didn't have a real strong idea. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'd listen to a few episodes here and there of, you know, maybe Joe Rogan and, and, but I didn't have a, you know, super strong idea of how to do one where, you know, it's just you and you by yourself. And I didn't know some of the stuff I was going to talk about. And I didn't know some of the stuff I'd be kind of going through, but I do feel you, man. And I am cognizant of that. You know, I don't want to be like a Debbie, you know, a, you know, a, Don, you know, a Donald Downer. So we'll keep that on tabs, man. I appreciate you calling in. Um, oh, and we have this here. Nick says opposite. Let's hear this. Hey, Theo, what's going on, man? This is Aaron from Northern Ontario. Just want to... Thank you for calling, Aaron. And a lot of beautiful Canadians that have called in. Um, and thank you for that, man. You know, it's it's amazing how loving, uh, how, how loving and um, just how loving people really are to the great white north. Onward. First off, say I love the show, but secondly, this is going back a couple weeks ago now, you had a gentleman call in who's getting a little emotional on the line, and you weren't too sure if you want to have these serious shows or these funny shows, and I just want to say, man, and I probably speak for most of us listeners, shows about you, man. If you're feeling emotional, I want to get emotional. I want to get all up in those emotions. If you're feeling funny. Dang. Whew, hope they got a referee around here. This is a frisky guy. Onward. I want to kick back and have a laugh, you know? I'm here for the Theo Vaughn experience, man. I'm not here for, you know, putting on a show for all these rascals, you feel me? All right, man, keep moving onward. Get that hitter. Gang, gang, man, thanks for the call. <sighs> yeah, you know, I appreciate your sentiment, man. I appreciate you saying some of those things. You know, because, I, I mean, there's definitely, you know, like, I feel like... You know, sometimes I feel a little bit like ashamed of myself, I guess, because, you know, I guess in some ways I didn't really have a place to talk to except to talk to myself about or to, you know, I don't know if when I first started this podcast, I felt like I was talking to someone or I felt like I was just talking to myself. You know, I don't know. Um, but. You know, it's been interesting, man. It's been interesting. You know, I guess part of me sometimes feels a little bit ashamed to be like, you know, talk about like emotions and stuff like that. You know, a lot of them, like, I don't really know some of the feelings that I've been having and stuff. I've been kind of scared, especially recently. You know, this year with my like career has been changing a lot. You know, and it feels like a lot of pressure. And, you know, I've talked about some of that kind of stuff. And it's scary. I mean, it's scary. You know, it's scary to feel like, uh, 
you know, people, you know, all your life you've felt like you've been saying you can do something, and then now people are looking at you to see if you can do it. And that can, you know, uh, that's just been kind of alarming. And I've just been, you know, and I go, man, I'm fucking just a late bloomer. You know, I didn't have a belief, you know, like a system when I was growing up where somebody told me, well, this is how you relate with women. This is how you uh, stand up for yourself. This is how you, um, you know, this is, you know, I don't know. My mother didn't give me a lot of those, you know, whatever Evan Bartels was saying in the beginning. What was he saying? Let me go back to that real quick. Let me go back to that real quick so I can reference that. Oh, mother, may I open my eyes? Cause there's a great big world waiting right outside. Oh, mother, may I raise my voice? Do we the people have? Yeah, that's Evan Bartles right there. And so I think some stuff I didn't, you know, I just didn't, I don't know. I did. I mean, my, you know, my dad wasn't around. I didn't, I just didn't have a strong system of what was okay and what wasn't okay when I was young. And after that, I got trapped inside of myself for about 25 years or 20 years or whatever. And so now I'm getting free. And so I think some things I'm learning on the fly. And, you know, it is kind of a bummer because if I, you know, I wear a lot of my stuff on my sleeves. And so it's hard for me to like come in and just hide and just be funny. You know, and it's tough when you don't have like drugs and alcohol sometimes to hide behind that. Not hide behind, but you, you know, you want to just fucking have fun, you know, blow a blunt and talk about a fucking, you know, a ma wondering if a falcon could pick up a fucking more than two marbles at the same time. You know, I want to do all of that shit. But sometimes my head gets a little clogged, but I appreciate you guys being a part of this journey, you know, this thing, this podcast. And I think it'll be times when it gets funnier. And I've been trying to also calm down, man. It's just been, a, this has been, this has been the craziest year of my life, I think, in some ways. You know, and I don't even know what to make of it. And I don't know sometimes if I have all the proper systems built into me because I want to, you know, I want to best serve you know, the opportunities that, you know, that, that God and life has put in front of me, you know, and not just for myself, you know, so I don't know. I don't also maybe don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, dude, you know, let's take one more call, man. And this came in from an old, uh, an old favorite. Hey, Theo, this is old JP from down in Alabama. Hadn't hollered at you in a while, man. I've been listening to you though. Really enjoy it. Thanks, JP. And JP have a um, he has a ex a spare appendage. He has a uh, not taxidermy. What's it called? He has a fake append. He has a, you know, he has that prosthetic hitter. So if that dude kicks you in the ass, bro, he he might fucking it might you know, the the foot might be from uh, Woolworths, you know, or from Macy's. So he has, and he also had a twenty thousand dollar leg that he had at one time. He had a high end leg. But I think he got repossessed or something. I can't remember what our previous conversation was. But that's fucking crazy. Boy, you're standing in the yard. And next thing you know, you know, those bounty hunters come and fucking wheel off with your fucking calf and shit. They wheel off with all your tarsals. That's wild, bro. You're like, bring back my shoe. That's my shoe. And they're just like, Arr! they're just cruising out. But JP from Alabama, man, I've always appreciated his calls. And thank you, man. I've wondered if you still listen sometimes. And, uh, and I'm happy to know that you do. Onward. You're still one of my favorite comedians, hell of an entertainer. I've noticed, though, man, from listening to you, you seem like you're struggling a little bit with some of the success you've been having over the last year. I just want to let you know, man, if it gets to be too much, just hang it up. 
come down here and work with me, you know. I'm right outside of Birmingham in a, in a warehouse down here, you know, driving a forklift in a freezer. I guarantee you, you'll wish you hadn't quit your damn comedian job <laughs> if you come down here and go to work with me, my friend. You'll be so damn tired that you won't even have time to be worried about these things you'd be worrying about. Your mama and you, your women and all that. Tell you, man, you got it made out there in Hollywood. Enjoy yourself. I love you, brother. Happy holidays. Gang, gang, man. Thank you, JP, dude. I think I actually needed to hear that a lot. You know, and I think I needed to hear it from a voice that I, you know, like could relate to a little bit or just like a, you know, you sound a little bit the same as me some. So, you know, and that's the thing about life. Sometimes you have to, you, we got to hear it from, we have to hear some things from a voice we need to hear from. You know, and you, you know what one of the truths is, man, you know, what's funny is when you say that JP, it makes me wonder, well, what's my part in like the most recent, like, what have I done recently in my life that, you know, has given me more time to, you know, sit and stir sometimes in my own feelings. And the truth is I haven't been as active as I could be. You know, I haven't been, you know, trying new experiences and I haven't been, you know, embracing life and I haven't been, you know, making my gratitude lists in the morning. You know, and I haven't really been taking as much action as I can uh, to be a part of the, you know, to be a, 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 a part of the system, a part of the living world, you know, a part of things feeling good and having fun. And so I think, you know, that's one thing that I can do is just, you know, like Brooks was here, bro. Like he said it, get busy living or get busy dying, dude. And that's Andy Dufresne, bro, from fucking... Phew, what is it, Shark Tank or something? I don't even know what it is. The prison movie, Busting Saddles. But thank you, man. You're right. You know, sometimes it's like, uh, you know, I do think, yeah, we can get back on, you know, hopefully on the, on so, to some of the funnier side of things. You know, and uh, and I appreciate you saying that, dude. And who the fuck has you driving a forklift in a freezer, man? Are you sure you're not kidnapped, bro? Dude, who kidnapped you? This sounds like you got, like you under house arrest over at, you know, over at Omaha Steaks. What's going on? Uh, I love you, man. I appreciate you calling in, dude. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all of our listeners always uh, for this past weekend. Um, yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I think one thing I have been feeling, JP, is I've just been feeling more. Dude, I've just been feeling more, um, there's just, I've been feeling more, uh, too much energy, too much going on, you know? And so, yeah, I want to slow things down in some ways, but get more active in others. Um, and I'm, part of me just wants to be not afraid to just, you know, I think sometimes when the podcast started getting busier this year, I started getting, you know, it, get, it gets in your head, you know? I mean, it's easier to shoot free throws and then people come and stand around and watch you shoot free throws and you start to, I don't know, it's na it's just nature that you feel nervous maybe. Or for me it is. Um, so yeah, it's just been a unique year. But, uh, you know, I'm going to hope that I have a new experience with the rest of this year. And I'm going to hope that, you know, that my higher power... Um, you know, helps me to just not, you know... This world is about all of us, and it's not about me. And just to think about, you know, what can I do to help others and to be of service? Because by helping others, I know that I'm going to feel better myself, you know? And, and I think that the world has exciting things in store for all of us. And all of our brothers and all of our mothers and all of our sisters and all of our, all of our cousins and all of our children, I think that they got some gang, gang stuff heading our way. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your support. Um, we'll play. I'll play Evan Bartle's full on the way out, man, because it's just such a beautiful voice and a beautiful ballad. And uh, and you guys be good to yourselves. You do deserve it. And I'm going to do it for myself. And I'm going to try to get these spirits lifting and get them swifting and just get action and stay action, bro.
Dude, I'll tell you this joke that I thought of the other day that I forgot about. I might have told it before, but did you hear about the Fonz? He got AIDS. And that's like a joke about Arthur Fonzarelli. If you don't know who the Fonz is, he was, um, anyway, whatever. Go look it up. Uh, I'll see you guys next week, and I'll see you in Washington, D.C. this coming weekend, and I'll, I'll be taping the episode from there, actually, and um, I'm heavily looking forward to that. And then I'll see you, see you in Lexington, uh, New Orleans, Houston, Irvine, uh, Omaha, and Columbus. All tickets on sale now, theovon.com slash tour onward. Uh. for me.